Hi, I'm Alan with the Plant Farm. I wanted to show you today how to propagate uh, pothos, and specifically today we'll be working with Marble Clean pothos. Uh, one of the first things, of course, we'll have to do is take some cuttings of uh, the Marble Queen. But before we do, let me tell you a little bit about the Plant Farm, uh, which is a retail outlet of Creech Greenhouse. We've been in existence since about 1968. We have eight covered acres of greenhouse, and right now we're standing uh, on the location where the first greenhouse was, was built back in 1968. Of course, that's not the same greenhouse today, but uh, we're, we use this area now for propagation. Uh, and so we're standing in this house, and all around us we have flats of propagated uh, vegetative cuttings for our spring crop. Behind us you can see the 12-inch hanging baskets, of which... Here at the greenhouse, we grow about 55,000 and spread them out throughout the new northwest corner of the nation uh, in uh, Washington and Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. But let me tell you a little bit more about how to propagate uh, our pothos. First thing we're going to do, we're going to want to take some leaf and eye cuttings. We'll divide our, our vine up into sections, and each section is going to have just one node. And you notice on each of the... Uh, the stems, we have these adventurous roots that just come out whenever the plant is growing. They reach out for humidity in the air. And as we, pl as we plant uh, our, our cuttings, we divided them up. What we want to do is we'll put them in a, we'll put them in a pot. This is one of our six inch pots. We have it filled with uh, some of our soil that we bring in. This is all, uh, peat moss and perlite and pumice. That's the three basic ingredients in the soil. And if you're going to propagate, you're going to want to use something very similar. Something that holds moisture around the root as a rule, especially with pothos, and then something that creates aeration in the soil. A lot of different soils in the market can be used, but I really want to highly recommend that you use something that maybe says propagation soil. So we're going to uh, use some of our rooting hormone and you see right here, this uh, root, we call it rooting powder, but uh, in essence, it's going to uh, stimulate some root growth. Uh, we're not going to use very much. I'm very, very lightly going to sprinkle just a small amount of our, our root tone on our plants, uh, just like maybe I was salting an egg or salting a steak, and I'm going to mix them up just a little bit so that I have a little bit of powder that's come in contact with those areas that I want to root. Next I'm going to take three of our cuttings and I want to make sure as I grab them that they're all oriented the correct direction. One of the things you notice is you can see here in this leaf and eye cutting that the leaf comes out here and it goes this way, uh, indicating that this area is down. That's kind of important, not a must for pothos, but a lot of our plants, if we propagate them or try to propagate them upside down, they really won't root very well. So pothos is a bit of an exception to that. But it's a good practice just to learn how to do that. And if you learn how to propagate, uh, orientating your plants properly, things like ivies, or the hedra family, the philodendron family, this mar the, uh, the uh, pothos family, all of those different vines root so much better if you've orientated your cuttings properly. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting in groups of three, and I'm gonna keep on sticking until I have a uh, pot that has approximately 21 to 25 cuttings in. And as I stick them, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this stem right here, the lower part of the stem, is inserted in the soil. It actually acts as an anchor. And I'm gonna insert it deep enough so that this adventurous root right here, which is where our new plant is gonna form, it'll start and come out right here, I'm gonna insert that adventurous root at ground level or below. So I'm not gonna be able to see much of my cutting except for the leaf. So let me stick the last few in. And then the final thing I want to do after I put my, my last few cuttings in, I want to make sure that this plant has been thoroughly watered and there's a good soil to, to uh, plant contact. And so we'll do that by just kind of flooding it a little bit with our water. And then the last thing we'll do, uh, if you're in the home, is maybe get a large Ziploc bag 
and just insert this whole pot in that Ziploc bag and close it up, then set it on your windowsill. And what you'll get is a high humidity environment, which is what pothos want in order to root. You'll also get the increased temperature that comes from the sunlight coming through your window and then into the bag. Be careful that you're not in full sun if you're later in the year because you can really create a cooking scenario. But uh, if it's winter time like it is right here, which we're in the second day of March today, uh, we have a lot of overcast. And here in the greenhouse, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this pot on the bench and come back in about three to three and a half weeks. And I'll have vines that are beginning to come and grow out of the pot. So once again, I'm Alan with The Plant Farm, and I hope this has been helpful for you as to how you can propagate uh, pothos or some of these other vining type plants.